Good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit. It's a fresh new week. Monday, February the 12th, 2024 at 6.05 a.m. And I hope this week will be the week that you give yourself completely to Jesus and talk to your friends about the Lord. So this morning we're in James chapter 4, uh, verses 2 and 3. And the title of the Breakfast Biscuit this morning is, What'd You Get? What'd You Get? So for those of you uh, while those others are tuning in, let me share with you this morning, if you haven't heard the wind outside, it's 50 degrees on the way to 57 for a high today. No rain, but gusty northwest winds this morning subsiding uh, this afternoon. So should kind of clear up a little bit. This morning, James chapter 4, verses 2 to 3, what'd you get? Listen to what James has to say in chapter 4, beginning at verse 2. You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Wow. Pretty strong. So, remember when you were a kid on Christmas morning, you go down the stairs, go into the den, see what you got, and that afternoon... You'd meet up with your friends and say, what'd you get? Or on the afternoon of your birthday, they'd ask you, what'd you get? Well, to be honest, children do childish things. And they many times make each other jealous. And they pout when they don't get what they want. And sometimes they behave like they're the only person in the world. It's different in prayer. There are two prerequisites to prayer. We've been talking a lot about prayer at CTEX lately. And one of the things we pointed out from Scripture is that there are two prerequisites to effective prayer. Number one, that you're holding nothing back from God and not regarding iniquity in your heart. And number two, that you're not asking Him for anything that is contrary to His will. So, let's ask some questions with those two caveats understood. What if you only had today what you thanked God for yesterday? What if you only had today what you asked God for yesterday? Let me ask you some questions. Did you spend time in prayer yesterday? Other than the blessing that was said over the food, other than what happened at church services, were you alone with the Lord? Did you allow yourself and provide yourself solitude and quiet and separation from electronics and demands and daydreams? Did you ask God for the crucifixion of your own flesh and that you would no longer live, but that Christ would live through you. Take your biggest needs to him and your biggest fears and your biggest worries and your biggest concerns. Your marriage, your kids, your grandkids, your church, your pastor, your finances, your estate and what will be done with it, your influence. And ask him to make it like he wants it. There's the key phrase. Kind of sounds a lot like thy will be done, doesn't it? Ask him to make it like he wants it for his glory and for the blessing of his people. Prayer is not just about seeing what you can get. It is about asking God to make it like he wants it for his glory, for the blessing of his people. Do that today in prayer and see what happens tomorrow. Your father will be pleased. In your prayer life, ask God to give you the heart to submit your requests to his will instead of asking God to submit his will to your prayer life. Let me pray for us. Father God, we pray today that you would help us to live a crucified life that Christ might live through us. Help us not to quarrel and fight because we don't have what we want. Help us not to pray with wrong motives. Lord, we ask that we would hold nothing back from you and that we would not regard iniquity in our hearts. And we pray in Jesus' powerful name that we would not ask you for anything that you don't want. We pray for your perfect will. We pray for the crucifixion of our flesh and for Christ to live through us. And we pray for this in Jesus' name, for your glory and for the blessing of your people. Lord, we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. And God bless you.